Hi guys, in this tutorial we're going to introduce the concept of moment of inertia of an area. Now I'd like to start with describing what you already looked at in earlier, earlier studies and then we'll relate those to the concept of moment of inertia of an area. That is the moment of inertia of a mass. So let's just describe the moment of inertia of a mass uh, very quickly. We'll study, we'll describe this or study it in details later on. I just want to use it as a starting point of the moment of initial of an area because it is something that we have looked at before. See, if we had a mass and we were looking for the moment of initial of a mass, earlier on we saw that for perfect objects whose geometry is just fine, with the moment of initial i could be described as just m and then we had r squared where r here was the distance to the axis of rotation. Now, this of course was for something that was perfect, uniform, and so on. Now, what if you were dealing with something, or what if you wanted to actually come up with this expression? Well, consider a ring that looks like this. So let's say you have a ring like this, and then you wanted to find its moment of inertia about that central point. Here, the radius of the ring can be taken. Let's take the radius here as y. So if the radius of the ring here is y, so it implies that the distance from here to somewhere there is basically what the radius is, which is r. And of course, we use y to mean the radius. Now, if we chose a small section here and consider this to just be um, a small section of the ring whose moment of initial we wanted to find, notice that in this case, let's say this is a small mass, let's call it dm. Then in such a case, we can actually determine the moment of initial of a small section, let's say the moment of inertia di, that would be equal to the radius, which is basically just y squared, and then the differential section that we have selected, the differential mass. So if we wanted to get the moment of inertia in this case for the whole thing, moment of inertia i would be the integral from y squared, and then we have dm here. But for such a case, the radius is fixed because again, I'm saying this is a perfect shape. The radius is constant, not changing. So this implies that the y squared there will not be affected by the integral. So we end up with y squared here, then the integral of dm. So in this case, what we end up with is going to be uh, y squared, and then we have m here. This is what leads us to the moment of inertia being equals to m y squared. But of course, in most cases, we took the radius to just be r. So this is how we ended up with that expression for m r squared as the moment of inertia of a ring. Now this can be done for other objects like um, like a solid sphere whose radius is changing basically starting from when r is zero all the way to when r is equals to the full radius of the sphere. So all those expressions will have their own moment of inertia. But all in all I hope you guys uh, have seen where this is coming from. But what if we wanted to look at the moment of inertia of an area, sometimes called the second moment of inertia? Well, if we wanted to find the moment of inertia of an area, it's the same, the same uh, idea. But the difference is, this is not of a mass, but instead, it's of an area. So, the moment of inertia di of an area, this will now be equal to the distance squared from the axis of rotation, to where that differential section was selected is. But since the differential section is no longer a mass, but an area, so here we're going to have d area. So this becomes the expression for moment of inertia of an area. So of course, this can now be interpreted as moment of inertia is equal to the integral of y squared and then dA. Of course, this is the area integral. Now, what does this expression actually imply? Well, the y squared here is the distance from the axis about which the moment is being evaluated to, um, uh, to where the, our differential area is. So that is what uh, that y squared, uh, that y represents. So basically that is what you're looking at there. Now consider uh, an, an object like this. Uh, let's say we wanted to look at something like this who's maybe wanted to find the moment of inertia of something that is somewhere here. See, in this case, we can easily determine the moment of inertia of such a shape from, let's say, the x-axis that is somewhere here 
by just looking at, let's say I wanted to find the moment of inertia i about the x-axis, we can actually approach this by just picking this and say that is our differential area, dA. So the distance from or that object perpendicular to the axis of rotation, that would have to be a distance from here all the way to the x-axis. But such a distance, observe that it is a distance measured in terms of the y-axis. So we can label this as y there. So if we wanted to get the moment of inertia i about the x-axis, this can now be seen as the integral of, this is the area integral again, so the distance perpendicular from the section of selected to the axis of rotation, that distance is just y, but it has to be squared, so we have y squared, and then of course dA here. In a similar way, if we wanted to get the moment of inertia about the y-axis, in this case we're going to have the integral, but the distance here is going to be parallel to the x-axis, it will have to be squared, then still we're going to have dA there. So this is how we get the moment of inertia about the x-axis and about the y-axis. Now, let's look at an example to just uh, understand what this implies and how to actually use it. So for our first example, let's consider a basic shape. Let's look at a rectangle. See, in this case, what we're trying to determine here is the moment of initial of a rectangular a rectangular area shown with respect to the x prime axis. The x prime axis, of course, being this axis here. Now, this, of course, uh, what we're seeing here is it's basically just the moment of initial about the centroidal axis, implying uh, an axis that passes through the centroid of our rectangular here. Now, how do we get its moment of initial about that axis? Well, to determine the overall moment of initial here, we consider a section that is uh, part of this structure. And for simplicity, the section that we're going to select here is going to be a rectangular strip. So, uh, of course, a rectangular slip, slip is going to be such that whose area can easily be related to the dimensions of this rectangle. So, just like we saw under centroids, we see that this thickness here can be related to, uh, to the, the height or to literally the vertical axis. So, this can be seen as a thickness in terms of the y prime axis. So, we'll take it as dy prime and observe that for this strip, it's uh it's width or let me say it's length in this in this direction can be taken as since this is b over 2 this is b over 2 so that whole dimension can be taken as b so why are we looking at that part well we saw to say that the moment of inertia about any axis so let's say in this case it's the moment of inertia i uh, about the x prime axis can be evaluated as the integral the distance from the axis to the section we have selected. In this case, the distance to the section is going to be from the axis, the axis is here, so that's a distance coming up to this part. So this distance, we see to say, this can this is a distance in terms of y prime, so you can take this as y prime. So we see to say this is basically just y prime, so notice that this approach is similar to how we're approaching centroids in a way, but really very different. Um, yes, slightly different. Let me say that. Okay, so it's the distance, but don't forget the distance has to be squared. So this is the distance squared, but then this has to multiply the differential area dA. Now again, just like in centroids, we can't integrate here because the y prime, um, here we're integrating with respect to uh, to dA, we can't really say y prime is independent of what is happening in terms of the uh, this dA because uh, our y prime here is really changing uh, from when it's equals to zero to all the way up to the end when it is equals to h over two. In fact, we can argue to say that our y prime is changing from when it is equals to negative um, h over two to all the way when it is equals to positive h over two. So those actually give us the limits of integration from negative h over 2 all the way to positive h over 2. But here we still have the problem. We are integrating with respect to dA. How do we make that uh, different? How do we make it work for us? See, we selected a differential section that is rectangular like this. 
and doing this allowed us to relate this dimension to the full breadth of our of our rectangle and the thickness here to the variable y prime so in this case we see that we can calculate the uh, the area of that differential section da and this can be found by just multiplying the the, the base b by the width there or the thickness d prime dy prime so this being the expression for our da we can then get this and plug it here so get that where we have da we'll now substitute that expression and if we did that we end up with b dy prime now this is something we can integrate we'll pull out b because b is a constant the base of our triangle of our rectangle so this is now y prime squared and then the y prime squared is being integrated with with respect to y prime from minus h over 2 to h over 2. when we integrate that y prime squared of course we're going to have y prime to the cubic and this is over 3 and then of course the limits of integration minus h over 2 to h over 2. now of course we still have the b which was outside here when we substitute what h is there this is now b then we'll still have when h when y prime is h over 2 this is going to be b squared i can factor out the 3 it's not being affected by the limits there so when i plug in h over 2 i'll have b b squared over 2 squared which is 4 minus when i factor oh, sorry this is this is not the power there is a 3 not a 2 so when i factor in h over 2 this will be um i'm factoring h over 2 i really made uh, few mistakes there so where there's y prime if we put h over th h over 2 this is going to be h over 2 there and then this is raised to power 3 minus now we have negative h over 2 and then we're raising this to power 3 so be very careful about mistakes you saw i just made one there but so pay attention to what you're writing keep processing it as you go so i have b over 3 here and this is now h cubic 2 to the power 3 that is 8 and then the minus and the minus coming from there will give a positive this will also be h to the power 3 and this gives us 8 as well the base is the same so we end up just adding the numerator this is now b over 3 adding the numerator this is now just going to give us 2 h to the power 3 over 8 now the 2 and the 8 to simplify so that now it's just 3 multiplying 4 which is 12 so this gives us b h to the power 3 over 12. so this becomes the expression for the moment of inertia about the x prime axis now we can do the same thing and find the moment of inertia about the y prime axis now for the y prime axis how would you do it so we'd also look at the same structure but to find about the y prime axis we can in fact now choose a differential section that is going to be this side let me try to draw it somewhere fresh to find the moment of inertia about the y prime axis what we'll now try to do here is we'll, it's the same approach but now we'll pick a differential section that is more like this way the techniques that we're using here are similar to the ones that we used when we we're looking at um, at centroids because in centroids we had to get the uh, the the centroid the x-coordinate of the centroid and the y-coordinate so here now it's like i'm just trying to do the same thing but about the y-axis so in this case i've selected a vertical section there sometimes you'll be able to just pick that uh, the same section that we had in the first case and still make it work for both sides but here i'll just demonstrate how it would come out if we picked a vertical section now for the vertical section observe that in this case something like this notice that its thickness now uh, that thickness there is in terms of the x prime axis so we'll have that x prime axis and then the height there 
now this height is in terms of the full height of this of this rectangle and the full height is basically just h over 2 plus h over 2 which is just h so if we wanted to get our area now da our area now is going to be seen as h multiplying dx prime so that now when getting the moment of inertia about the y prime axis so what we're going to have is the integral the distance from the y prime axis to where this is observe that this distance now will have to be this distance and see that this distance is parallel to the x prime axis so what i'll have here is x prime so again that has to be squared so this is x prime but we'll just have to square this multiplying dA so that in the end what we have is the integral of x prime squared then multiplying our dA we had h then we have dx prime so the h can be factored out because it's not affected by the integral so we have h here the integral of x prime squared then dx prime so the limits of integration observe that now x prime is changing from this point where it is minus b over 2 and then it's going all the way up to when it is positive b over 2. So the limits of integration will be from minus b over 2 to positive b over 2. It's similar to what we had earlier on but now observe that everything is in terms of x prime. So from here uh, what are we going to do here? We can actually integrate this so we end up with h here. The integral becomes x prime to the power 3 and this is going to be over 3 and then this is from minus b over 2 to b over 2. When you simplify this expression going all the way to the answer you should see that the moment of initial about the y prime axis it's similar to the answer we got in the previous case uh, but this is going to be equal to h then this is going to be b to the power 3 over 12 just as we saw in the previous case the only difference is for x what we had was h square h cubic over 12 b h cubic now this is h b cubic so let me actually put these two equations side by side so you can see how similar they are to each other okay so this is what we found about the x prime axis okay so having done this there will be cases where you are given a structure whose moment of inertia is actually very hard uh, to evaluate as in maybe when you try to evaluate the moment of inertia from a particular point uh, it becomes very difficult to, uh, to, uh, to to find well for those cases we have what we call the parallel axis theorem okay so we have the parallel axis theorem for an area now this theorem is going to be more effective or more useful for uh, events where you're given the moment of inertia uh, about the centroidal axis so these formulas for the centroidal axis will be given to you in most cases but a question can then be phrased where they want you to now find the moment of inertia of a same object but now not from the centroidal axis but from an axis that is away from that centroidal axis now here we're going to use the parallel axis theorem and to see how to answer that check out the next tutorial now right, guys we'll see you in the next tutorial where we'll look at the parallel axis theorem applied to the example we were just working out in the previous in this video see you guys